While recovering from the damage caused by a great war, Japan must figure out how to deal with a new threat, as the king of the kaijus has just emerged from the depths of the ocean. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Godzilla Minus One, from 2023. In 1945, in the final moments of the Second World War, Koichi Shikishima was sent as a kamikaze pilot to eliminate an American army ship. However, he lost heart during the mission and diverted his route to Odo Island, claiming that his plane needed repairs. That night, the island is invaded by an insane kaiju and all the mechanics hide while Koichi runs to the plane. The soldier's aim is to shoot Godzilla in an attempt to eliminate him, but he is paralyzed with fear, so his colleagues start shooting and end up attracting the creature's attention. At that moment, Koichi sees all those men being eliminated right in front of him and is unable to do anything to help them. After eliminating the mechanics, Godzilla destroys the aircraft, but Koichi manages to escape before the attack and becomes one of the only survivors on the island. Mr. Tachibana also managed to survive the attack and blames Koichi for the elimination of his companions. A few days later, the soldier returns to Tokyo and finds the city completely destroyed. During the war, he lost all his friends and family and now has to fight for his own survival. One day, Koichi meets Nariko and discovers that she has adopted a child who lost her mother a few weeks ago during an air raid. From that day on, Koichi decides to help the woman raise Akiko and they both follow Samiko's instructions to take care of the baby. Now that he has two more people to feed, the ex-pilot goes in search of a job that pays enough to provide for his new family and is hired to remove the mines that were left in the ocean during the war. When she finds out that her friend is going to risk his life for this job, Nariko is furious, but Koichi says he had no other choice, as this is the only way to guarantee Akiko's survival. On his first day on the job, he discovers that there are more than 6,000 mines to be removed from the coast of Japan and many of them are magnetic, which means that if a ship made of metal gets close, they will explode. At this point, Koichi meets Noda, a Japanese man who developed naval weapons during the Second World War. Akitsu and Mizushima are also part of the team and teach the newcomer how to clear mines. As well as detaching them from the seabed and making the bombs rise to the surface, the group has to explode them. So Koichi uses the skills he acquired during the war to shoot the mines and make them explode at a safe distance. Months later, hundreds of mines have been disarmed and Koichi's entire team is still alive. Alongside Noriko, the soldier raises Akiko with all the love and affection that the young girl didn't have the chance to receive from her biological parents. Thanks to his work, he manages to save money to build a house for his family and invites his friends to a dinner party so they can celebrate this new achievement together. When Akiko grows up, Noriko decides to get a job to become an independent woman, as she knows that Koichi has no obligation to support her forever. Although she loves Koichi, Noriko's plan is to pursue her own life so that he has the chance to find a wife and build his own family. The woman then tells him that Sumiko has offered to look after Akiko while she works, but Koichi isn't happy about this news, as he's used to having them at home. The next day, while Koichi and his team are collecting the mines on the high seas, they come across a shipwreck and wonder what kind of creature could cause such damage. Immediately, the former pilot remembers the attack he suffered on Odo Island and claims that Godzilla is back. Upon hearing this, Akitsu understands the real reason why they were sent on a mission in the ocean and feels cheated, as no one warned them that the group would have to deal with the fury of a hooded kaiju. When he realizes that Godzilla could appear at any moment, Koichi becomes nervous, as he feels he must avenge the elimination of his companions, but at the same time he is terrified of the creature. Suddenly, the ship they are on begins to be surrounded by perished abyssal creatures and the soldier soon realizes that this is a sign that Godzilla is approaching. He quickly starts sounding the alarm and advises his friends to return to the city. But instead of fleeing, Akitsu decides to attack the monster and prepares to drop the mines he has collected. When Godzilla appears, the captain flies away while his men release the mines into the ocean. They then wait for the monster to approach and activate the bomb. However, the explosion is not enough to eliminate Godzilla and only serves to make him angrier. Furious, the animal swims quickly towards the boat and Koichi uses a machine gun to fire at the Titan, but this attack is also unable to defeat it. Then, seeing the kaiju swimming towards him with its mouth open, Noda decides to throw the second mine into the ocean and, as Godzilla devours it, Koichi starts shooting and the explosion causes the creature to be seriously injured. However, Godzilla manages to regenerate quickly and is very angry. Luckily, just then, an army ship approaches and attacks the enemy with cannon fire. This attack attracts the Titan's attention and he heads towards his new target. However, before Godzilla can sink the ship, he is hit again and plunges into the sea. When all the soldiers believe their enemy has been destroyed, an atomic ray shoots out of the water and breaks the ship in half. After the chaos, 
Godzilla leaves to recover from his battle wounds and Koichi and his companions return to Tokyo. The man wakes up in a hospital room, having suffered a head injury, and gets up to help evacuate the city. At this point, he learns that the government does not intend to tell the Japanese about the existence of Godzilla, as the country is only now beginning to recover from the war. When Koichi arrives home, Noriko notices that he is down and asks what happened. Then the soldier decides to tell the truth and says that he was a kamikaze pilot. During the mission, instead of blowing up the American ship and giving his life for his country, he got scared and ran away. Koichi then landed on Odo Island, where there was a team of mechanics, and claimed that his plane was faulty. On that day, a giant monster appeared and the mechanics asked him to use his aircraft's guns to fire, but once again the pilot was paralyzed with fear and, because of him, all those men were eliminated. Since then, Koichi has lived in a daze and, when Godzilla appeared for the second time, he was unable to eliminate him either. After this succession of failures, he feels that he has lost his honor and is therefore unworthy of continuing to live. Upon hearing this, Noriko feels bad for her friend, so she tries to comfort him and says that he was destined to live, which is why he managed to cheat fate so many times. While the population rebuilds the country, the Japanese soldiers continue to try to get rid of Godzilla before he wreaks more havoc. Reports indicate that the monster is on its way to Tokyo Bay, so the sailors set off bombs to try and stop it. However, the blockade is overcome and the creature heads toward Shinagawa. At that point, the government has no choice but to sound the emergency alert and begin evacuating the city. Noriko is inside a train when Godzilla decides to attack and, from a distance, she sees the monster approaching. Suddenly, the creature bites the train and carries one of the wagons in its mouth. Luckily, Noriko manages to survive and has to jump into the river to avoid being devoured. While Godzilla uses all his fury to attack the city, some reporters climb onto the roof of a building to film the scenes of destruction and end up being knocked down along with the rubble. After surviving the attack on the train, Noriko walks through the streets in search of shelter and ends up being knocked down by the crowd, who are desperately fleeing from the approaching monster. Just then, Koichi appears and helps the woman up. Together, they run as the military appear with their war tanks and start shooting at Godzilla. Feeling threatened, the creature decides to use its secret weapon and starts recharging its body to use its atomic breath to destroy everything and everyone around it. When she sees the cloud of debris approaching, Noriko pushes Koichi into an alley and manages to save him, but her body ends up being carried away by the strong wind. After the attack, Koichi comes out of hiding and despairs when he realizes that Noriko is eliminated. After destroying almost half the city and eliminating more than 30,000 people, Godzilla returns to the ocean. During Noriko's funeral, Koichi is still in a state of shock and Sumiko tries to calm Akiko down, as the girl misses her mother figure. That day, Noda reveals to his friend that there is a strategy being created to defeat Godzilla and invites him to take part in the execution of this plan. As the government is unable to protect its people, the former Navy officers unite to carry out the plan devised by Noda. The former Navy engineer claims that Godzilla cannot be harmed with conventional weapons, as he is able to regenerate quickly. It will therefore be necessary to adopt another strategy to eliminate him. The man uses a piece of floating wood to demonstrate that there is a specific type of gas that can be used to sink objects and reveals that he intends to use it to trap Godzilla at the bottom of the sea. Noda explains that the Sagami Trench is an area 1,500 meters deep and that's where they must lure the monster. With the help of Freon gas, the creature will sink so fast that the pressure of the water will crush it. To put this plan into practice, two ships will be needed that will encircle Godzilla and surround him with cables equipped with several cylinders of Freon gas. When the monster is trapped by the cables, the gas will be released and it will quickly sink to a depth of 1,500 meters. If this strategy fails, there is still a plan B, which consists of using a buoy to bring the creature back to the surface in a few seconds. In this case, if the hydraulic pressure is unable to crush Godzilla, he will face a massive decompression that will destroy him immediately. Noda concludes his explanation by saying that it is not possible to guarantee that, if executed masterfully, this plan will be able to eliminate the monster, but he says that this is the best chance they have of saving Japan. Upon hearing this, many men refuse to take part in this plan, believing that they have sacrificed enough for their country and now prefer to dedicate the rest of their lives to staying with their families. However, most of the ex-soldiers decide to stay and face their greatest enemy, as they believe this is the only way to protect those they love. Later, during dinner, Akitsu asks how his friend intends to lure the monster to the Sagami Trench and Noda reveals that they will use loudspeakers to play a voice recording they have collected from Godzilla. When it hears the recording, the kaiju will think that this is the vocalization of a competitor who has gone after it for a territory dispute and will follow it. However, according to Akitsu, 
This plan is very flawed, so Koichi claims to have a better idea for attracting the creature. The pilot says he can use a fighter plane to shoot Godzilla and make him furious. That way, he'll chase him into the pit. Even though he knows he risks being hit by the atomic blast, Koichi sets out to carry out the mission and Akitsu soon realizes that his friend wants to do it to avenge Nariko's elimination. The man then claims that Koichi should have married her when he had the chance, because he always knew that the woman had strong feelings for him. Then the pilot said that he loved her too, but he couldn't ask her to marry him because, since abandoning his mission, he feels like an unworthy and dishonorable man. A few days later, Koichi is introduced to the aircraft that will be his ally in this battle and discovers that it is the most modern warplane ever created, as it is extremely fast and designed to destroy bombers. As the vehicle has been idle for a long time, a mechanic needs to be called in to make the necessary repairs, and Koichi goes after Mr. Tachibana to ask for help. He was the only mechanic to survive the chaos on Odo Island and is still furious with Koichi for what happened. However, when he discovers that the young man is willing to risk his own life in the mission to eliminate Godzilla, Tachibana decides to help him. After a few days of mapping the monster's movements, Noda manages to predict its movements and says that, if everything goes according to plan, it will arrive at the Sagami Trench the next day at 11 am. This means that the soldiers involved in this operation must mobilize to be in position at 8 am sharp. That night, Noda asks his companions to go home and spend as much time as they can with their families, because they don't know if they'll make it out of this mission alive. Although they are carrying out an extremely risky strategy, Noda is not willing to lose any of his companions in battle and promises that their lives will not be risked in vain. There are only a few hours left before Koichi boards the aircraft to carry out the mission he believes he won't get out of alive. So he decides to spend more time with Akiko, as she is the only person he can consider part of his family. That night, the little girl gives him a drawing of her parents, Koichi and Noriko. Suddenly, Akiko starts crying and reveals that she misses her mother, so Koichi picks her up and tries to console her. The next morning, before leaving, he leaves an envelope with money for the girl, who will now be under Samiko's care. Koichi then gets on his motorcycle and heads to the shed where the plane is stored. When he gets there, he meets Mr. Tachibana and the mechanic reveals that he has installed the bomb that the pilot asked for. Instead of just baiting Godzilla with his shots, Koichi's real plan is to fly straight into the monster's mouth and blow up the aircraft to try and eliminate it, in case Noda's plan doesn't work. Even though he knows he will lose his life by doing so, Koichi spares no effort to eliminate the monster that took Noriko's life and guarantee Akiko's future. At this point, the sailors who will lead the ship are already in position and awaiting Godzilla's arrival to begin the mission. As planned, they use a loudspeaker to emit the sound of the creature itself in order to attract it, but suddenly Noda and his companions see the ship being thrown into the dock. Furious, the monster approaches the bay at high speed and Koichi takes off to try and stop it. Before taking off, the pilot puts a photo of Noriko on the dashboard of the plane and, looking at the image of the woman, he feels encouraged to carry out his mission. Just then, Sumiko receives a telegram addressed to Koichi. Godzilla has just left the sea and is on his way to Tokyo when the pilot appears and starts bombing him. After firing numerous shots, Koichi manages to lure the enemy back into the ocean and Noda asks the general to transmit a message to the other ships, ordering them all into battle position. Enraged by Koichi's attacks, Godzilla uses the radiation from his body to fire his atomic breath at him, but fails to hit him. Seeing the creature's incredible power, some soldiers are thinking of abandoning ship, because they know that if the vessels are hit, everyone will be eliminated immediately. However, Noda knows that after an attack, Godzilla needs time to recharge his energy, so he takes the opportunity to start the operation. The general then orders the two ships equipped with Freon gas to head towards the creature and use the steel cables to wrap around its body. Meanwhile, Koichi keeps trying to distract the kaiju so that it doesn't notice the approaching warships. After circling the monster's body, the boats end up colliding with each other and the crew must prepare for the impact. However, they manage to minimize the damage and successfully complete the first stage of the operation. As planned, the cylinders are attached to Godzilla's body and, just as the monster was about to fire his atomic breath for the second time, Noda orders his men to release the gas. The bubbles created in this process cause the Titan to be dragged downwards and, in a few seconds, it reaches a depth of 1,500 meters. However, even after being crushed by the pressure of the water, the sailors feel the cable being pulled and realize that Godzilla is still alive. So they have to start plan B and Noda activates the buoys to get the monster floating again. The rapid decompression causes the monster to be seriously injured, but it chews through the cables and gets rid of the buoys before reaching the surface, which allows it to survive. So the general orders his men to use the ships to pull the creature out as quickly as possible, 
but one of the vessels begins to collapse and the soldiers can do nothing but wait for Godzilla to return. At that moment, Mizushima, who had been forbidden to take part in the battle because he was too young, appeared on a boat in the company of Mr. Koimaru and took a large fleet to help his friends. Most of the sailors who had given up on the mission regretted their choice and decided to go to sea in the hope of making up for their mistake. With the help of the small boats, the two main ships managed to pull the kaiju to the surface and everyone is disappointed to discover that, despite being extremely injured, Godzilla is still alive. As both strategies have failed, all the soldiers can do now is run away to try and survive, before the monster recovers and goes after them. However, when Godzilla prepares to launch his atomic blast, everyone accepts defeat because they know it's impossible to get out of that attack alive. At that moment, Koichi emerges from the clouds with his plane and flies towards the enemy. Before the plane reaches Godzilla's mouth, the pilot pulls a lever and, seconds later, the plane explodes, destroying the monster's head. When they realize that the enemy has been slaughtered, the sailors feel relieved because they have just been saved by a miracle, but Akitsu is extremely sad to lose one of his best friends. However, while looking up at the sky, Noda spots Koichi and discovers that he was able to save himself thanks to the ejector seat that Tachibana had installed. A few kilometers away, the mechanic is following the battle on the radio and is relieved to discover that Koichi managed to pull the lever in time. As he was unable to release his atomic breath, Godzilla ends up being destroyed by the heat of his own radiation, which begins to leak from inside his body. After slaughtering their greatest enemy, all the soldiers come together to pay their respects and, when they return home, they are welcomed as heroes. Finally, Koichi feels that he has paid his debt to his country for abandoning his mission as a kamikaze pilot and the feeling of dishonor no longer torments him. Just then, from the middle of the crowd, Mrs. Sumiko appears with Akiko on her lap and hands over the telegram that was sent to Koichi. Upon reading it, the man discovers that his beloved Noriko is alive and immediately rushes to meet her. When he arrives at the hospital and sees the woman, he begins to cry and hugs her in relief. Meanwhile, in the depths of the Sagami Trench, Godzilla's remains begin to regenerate, making it clear that the kaiju is still alive. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.